Fantastic. So again, my name is Holly Robinson, and I'm a career um, and academic advisor here in the Faculty of Education. Um, and so tonight I'm going to be here and I'm going to sort of talk about the admission component of everything that, that um, goes on with the OE, OE program and sort of what our program looks like in general. Um, and we have Zabby um, McEachern here, who is our OEE expert. Um, and she's going to take over and, and start the presentation. And I'm going to finish it off. So I'll just hand it over to Zabby and she can introduce herself and let you know all about the wonderful things that we have um, going on for our OEE program. Just um, to start with, it's nice to see all these names popping up, even though I don't always see pictures, just because most of these names are all students that I have taught in the past, like the, uh, the first name. And um, so you're bringing back all these uh, memories for me of alumni in different years. Um, I've been doing the OE program for 20 something, 20, 22 years now. Um, so I got to share my screen. It seems a little stuck. Can you guys all see that? Or Holly, can you tell me if that uh, worked? Not yet. Hmm. Okay, let's try again. Has that worked? It's working, but we're seeing the um, the others. Yeah, perfect. There we go. So um, yes, the outdoor and experiential education problem program we call it OEE for short. And it's just to give you a brief explanation, like why outdoors? Um, because it's a great environment. Um, why does learning always have to occur in indoor environment? Uh, it's kind of our most um, the historically, the way everything was learned pretty much outside. And it's also interesting to um, consider the difference between what's indoors and outdoors. I used to ask myself when a groundhog went in its hole, is it doing indoor out education or is it continuing to do um, outdoor education? So it's, it, and again, with today, with the issues of climate change, I think it's really important that we become more in tune with the natural world. So we tend to focus on learning as much as we can outdoors, unless it makes sense to be indoors for some reason. Okay, now I'm not advancing. Give me a second to figure out what's going on here. Here we go. Um, so why experiential? It's basically a way of saying when you are more involved through physical movement, through hands-on learning, um, and it's not to say that you won't be thinking, you can read a book and that's in a type of an experience, but we'd encapsulate more ways to learn and we kind of refer to it experiential learning. Um, so a year at the, a glance, um, but there's field camp, there's two courses that make up the OE year, there's an outdoor practicum. Um, so instead of going into a regular school, you can go to an outdoor um, program in Ontario. Um, some of them are in schools, but others are actually at centers. There's an alternative practicum, which everybody gets. So there definitely is an advantage being in the OE practicum or program. You get one more practicum in the field, you could say. And then um, there is also in your final classes, you share those practicum experiences. And it's just, um, I'm so envious sometimes when I see all the amazing things that people have done for their outdoor practicum as well as their alternate practicum. And when possible, when the timing works, I also give, give a very brief one hour introduction um, in May when you show up on campus, just to kind of orient you and introduce you to all. Not everybody is in the OE program at that time, the concurrent's still on around, but for the consecutives, it just helps you to know who else will be in the program and come fall. So field camp is basically a wide variety of typical outdoor and experiential type activities. I'm not gonna go into too much details. Um, and then people um, basically do a bit of an evaluation afterwards, comparing what was the most significant learning experience at field camp out of a, the wider range of things you could be doing. Why do you tend to find the most value in certain types of activities over others? 
So this has become a bit more of a um, makeup activity for if you miss classes, but um, there is an emphasis on learning by making things. Um, Hands-on learning is a big part of that. And so usually I consider it a craft. Um, and again, it's extra challenging to make something that's useful, not just something that to you is aesthetically pleasing, like we typically consider art, but to make something that functions and it fits your body is I think a much more challenging experience. So, and these again will vary in the amount of time people commit to them for various reasons. Um, so in our main class, um, the, the, which we call Foci 260, um, at the beginning of the year, I will organize the classes and we will in the September month, and we will typically go to a wide variety of outdoor centers that are local, run by the different school boards or national parks or conservation areas. And then I turn it over to the class. You will be put in, not put, you'll be, you'll choose by the topic, um, your own groups, and you will organize um, the classes for most of the rest of the year, not the spring sessions. And I call these GOCs, group organized classes. Um, and so you can highlight what you think you should still be learning about. Uh, maybe I haven't covered it enough um, in those September classes and or just things that you think are valued for everybody else to learn. And they can really vary. Um, so some, here's some examples. Um, we've gone to the delivery room at the hospital and we've also gone to morgues. We've gone to places where they collect seeds and oh, five or six different types of gardens over my years here. And some of them are organic farms. Um, some of them are organic creameries. We've had people come in and present about sustainable food. We've also had wild food chefs come in and talk about harvesting. And we've discussed hunting and hunting as a valid form of outdoor ed or just acquiring um, healthy food. Um, we've also done a lot of bouldering or climbing and we've had, that's been tackled in different ways from doing uh, more of just the value in being so physical and climbing like as it's an for some and considered an extreme physical workout and for others there it's just a very complex physical way of understanding problems and, and working through them to be able to move from one hold to the next um, we've got done in more detail crafts and we've gone to a, a local center where there's a variety of craft guilds. Um, and we've also explored eco art and what makes it eco art. Um, the, we've gone to local alternative schools. One of them, and we've gone to a few times over my years here has been the Mulberry Walder School where there's actually a few graduates of the OE program working. They, they have a strong emphasis on the outdoors as well as an art-based experiential program. Um, so it's often popular. And we've also had people come in from different alternative schools. One of those was from the Pine Project, which um, is kind of a way of saying primitive skills experts and why they incorporate that into educational programs. And we've also done different, in different ways, um, topics on First Nation education. So we've had sweats, I've had them a few times, as well as people doing drumming circles or talking about spiritual um, Anishinaabe practices. So all of these fall under the banner of OEE education. And again, if your group has a particular interest, then you get to organize a class on that throughout the year. And we there's a way to come upon the schedule. And you also will deal with the administrative side of the OEE program or programming anywhere. Um, so I typically call that PARS, which was positions of added responsibility. Um, some people think they might be better called service learning, um, where you have to organize an event or make something happen for others, not just in the OE program, it might be to the whole fac of ed. So a few times people will go to other settings and they will offer an experience, but it's really the emphasis is on you organizing the experience, whether you bring in a special keynote speaker or a storyteller or somebody who's going to run a project wild workshop so you have to book the room you have to figure out how to advertise for it things like that um, the ones that have been a bit more 
emphasize with your peers have been the swimming qualifications because that's a big part of outdoor and experiential ed as well as the first aid. So some people will organize classes that you can all make. Other times people will, if they have their own expertise or they want to learn to be an expert in something, they acquire the experience if they don't already have it and then they offer a workshop in that area. Um, a few times people will link with another organization and help them with some admin, whether it's marketing, organizing special workshops for them. I've had one person go into a local school and help run a bike day where everybody um, is promoting cycling. Um, sometimes people will coordinate clubs. So these have to kind of occur consistently throughout the year, um, whether it's knitting or a musical instrument. Um, uh, sometimes people will do things that are associated with the OE program. Um, you'll see in a moment a marketing um, video, as well as we have done different things with recipes and food. And so they've created this single serving recipe book that you, again, everybody can go into their schools with, um, kind of has a back pocket curriculum activity ready to go um, that's based on food and just needing a toaster oven kind of in your classroom. And then a few times people will organize special events. Some of these I, I help um, using my own background in these areas. And other times they're specially organized just by um, the people in the program. So these are all, again, things that fall under this par. And the emphasis is on the learning, the admin side of things. So many times people will get to participate, but again, it's a transition that you're going through as educators is you might, you, you can spend a lot of time organizing an event, but you never really get to, you know, um, be on it. Um, like in the sense of you're not, um, if you're going horseback riding, maybe for whatever reason, you don't get to go on the horses, but everybody in your class does. Or um, the emphasis is on the amount of paperwork that is often required to make something happen, the safety forms, things like that. Um, so the application process, um, I'm typically the one who looks at the, everything. And this is my advice, is to highlight your uniqueness and passion with specific details. Just um, don't make it really general um, because when I get a whole pile of people, like, and sometimes there's over a hundred people up applying for 25 um, positions in the program. But if everybody says, I really like the outdoors and I've always wanted to be an outdoor educator since I was a little kid, that doesn't stick in my mind. I've kind of heard that many times. So I like the specific examples. They're what tends to stick. So whenever possible, um, try and include even briefly a specific example. Um, you basically, the things I highlight or look at the most um, is the artifact, the letter of introduction and the alternate resume. So in some ways you have three chances to capture my attention. And often when I'm looking at them and I have a lot to go through, I will set myself a time limit. Um, so I look at everybody's package and, and then when my time's up, then um, I move on to the next person. And I have little notes so I can quickly find you again if and want to then um, concentrate on something that may, you maybe said that interested me. Um, and I'm so I'm looking for a diverse range of experience with um, within each outdoor and experiential ed year. So for instance, I don't want 25 people who have all done wilderness canoe tripping. I want one or two. Um, I don't want a whole class full of people who want to be forest educators. So with little kids in a forest school, I want one or two. Um, so that when we sit down in a group and discuss a topic, there's a wide diversity of backgrounds and interest, and that adds to making for great discussions. Um, so the, again, highlight your uniqueness and your passions, even if you don't have that background, but you're pretty sure you want it, um, go ahead and explain it and just try your best to convey that passion. Um, and basically don't give up. Um, I know I've had people apply a few years if they really want the OE program, um, but you also could be on a wait list. So don't give up, always try. Um, these are some highlights for things that the OE students from past years have said. Wednesdays is when we have our classes, their extended time periods, that Wednesday OE classes are the highlight of my week. 
We are close because we eat and share so much together. We typically have a meal with all our outings on those Wednesday classes. This is the first time I've wanted to work on group projects. Um, it is really nice when people in an educational program really like the peers that they're working with and they're working on this project together. So those are typically the gawks. Um, and I can't imagine completing the, the year without having been in OEE. Um, before I show this video, does it, anybody have a question? Maybe you can unmute and ask. Oops. No specific question. I, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, so I know that on the website, there's kind of a brief description of what you mean by artifact, but I was wondering if you could give some examples that might give us a better idea. Um, yes. So the in the past, artifacts were actually mail in or dropped off. And that changed the COVID year when everything was online. And, and so the all the information basically had to become electronic. So the artifact, I would um, take a picture of something, um, you know, people who have made paddles or um, knitted a hat or made something unique at a camp or whatever your background is, um, or maybe it is something from a cottage or whatever, they submit the picture. And if it's not really self-explanatory or you want to um, include a bit more, you can give a one page double space type write up that explains it. Um, I'm not, um, again, I'm limited for time. So really do follow the um, guidelines for the time, the, the le limits on things. Um, and in some ways, if I have to choose between two people who are pretty similar or they seem equivalent, if one person really did follow those directions, I know that person can follow directions and I might be tempted to choose them over the person who went over the limit. Um, so I'm still trying to get this in. Is that is, any other questions or is, is that a complete enough answer for you? Yeah, thank you. Um, I also had a question mm -hmm. about the, uh, now I'm forgetting the name of it, of course, but it's like a condensed kind of version of our resume that's in like a table. Table? Not for experience with kids. Do you, mean so, the, do you mean the personal statement of experience? It, Which is, it's you, technically you, separate from the, your OE application, but you still have to do that. Oh, okay. So then maybe that isn't a question for you. We, you know what, what we can do is if you have like really specific OEE questions, like right now, feel free to ask them. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go through all the admission stuff in a few minutes. So I'm gonna talk about all of the stuff you have to do for the admissions portion that's not related to OEE that everybody who's applying to the consecutive program has to do. And then we can have questions again at the end. Okay, sounds good, thank you. I'll, I'll just clarify because you mentioned resume. The um, ultimate resume um, can be very creative. So it's basically think of two PowerPoint slides that com combine because it's only supposed to be one page. You, you can go both sides. So that's why I say two. But you know, combine some pictures, combine some text. Don't overdo the text. Um, they it just can be really enjoyable to read the alternate resumes. Um, one time I had like a map of somebody's room and they um, described what was on each of the walls. Um, other times people will list like their favorite um, movies and why, or their favorite songs and why, or their favorite books, what's on their bucket list. Um, and <laughs> one of my favorite examples was somebody said, I'm really good at backing up a fully passed, a fully loaded um, passenger van with a canoe trailer. And I know from experience, I'm really bad at that. So that just told me more than if they had said, I worked at camp so-and-so for four years. Um, you know, they understand responsibility and, and what can be really challenging when you have a fan load of people in a canoe trailer behind it. Um, so have fun with the alternative resume and I will have fun reading them. 
Any other questions? And then I'm gonna try and show you this video. So this video um, was made by an OE student um, from the graduation year of 2020. Um, to, I have permission to show this to you, to you guys. And this is basically what they were giving, they made to pass the torch to the incoming OEE year. And it captures a lot about what the OEE year is about um, for them. So I'm just gonna play that. Oh, I hope the volume works. Give me, okay, here we go. We can't see, it's not on the same screen. Sorry, tell, what's the problem? We're all, we can just still see the power, the slides. We can't actually, the video is not showing on our screen. That tells me I am, maybe I'll try a new share. So make sure it's on the, you're showing the right screen maybe. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let me go back, sorry. I do consider myself a bit of a Luddite. I'm from a generation that, you know, had, landline phones, <laughs> not computers. I didn't have a computer until I did my PhD. Okay, here we go again. Oh, I don't think the volume is working, is Abby? Sorry. Sorry, did I hear the volume's not working now? Yeah. Does anybody know how to change that? I have it on as loud as I can on my screen. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. Um, what? what it, sorry, I hit click. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to suggest you could turn on closed captioning. Oh, uh, let's see. Is that this CC? Yeah, I think it's on, but <laughs> it's actually on right now, but I don't know that we can. This is unavailable. Yeah. I think, um, sorry, I think if you go to your audio settings, like in the microphone um, and the blast option under the microphone audio settings if you go into that just in the audio um in the, audio, um, in the zoom or yeah in the zoom little where it's like you can mute at the bottom if you click on the little side arrow beside it and then there should be a whole bunch of settings and then at the bottom is audio settings so i have to get out of here to get to my oh go back to zoom okay go to the mute or the audio and sit, um, blast. If you go to the very bottom audio settings. Yeah, okay, got that one, yep. And then scroll down, I think, original sound for musicians, if you click that uh, toggle button. Um, it's at the, I see speaker, microphone, suppress background noise. Music and professional audio. Yeah. You think it's, sorry, music and professional audio? Or it's yeah. the show and meeting option to enable original sound. Yeah, I can't remember. I had this issue the other day actually, and I know I had to pick one of these toggle options to play the actual sound from a video when I was sharing my screen. Okay, well, give it a go. It did work last year I, when yeah. I showed. And I'll, do I have to press advance? Because uh, I don't see. Oh yeah, maybe, yeah. Signal pro. Okay, let's just see. Sorry about this. Oh, <laughs> 
So that's it for me. We're going to go back to Holly and she'll explain a bit more of the general faculty of education process. Mm -hmm all the admission, all the fun stuff. Savvy gets to do the good stuff and now I get to do the really fun stuff. Yeah, unless there's a, one more last minute question, I'm going to head off. Okay. Yeah, so if there's any OEE specific questions, now's the time. Okay. All right, thank you to so much. All your applications guys. Give me one sec. I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. Hi. Hi. I was just wondering if we're in the Con Ed program, if this next part is at all. So I was about to say, if you're Con Ed, I'm going to talk about the program, what it will look like in final year for you, but any admission stuff, Con Eds do not apply through T's. Oh you just do supplemental documents. So what OE what um, Zabby talked about in terms of like your alternative resume, your artifact, that's what Con Ed students are gonna to provide to student services. That's on our website, the link where you upload everything. Um, but anything to do with T's and UAC where you're applying through their transcripts that Con Ed students don't have to do that, okay? Thank you. Can everybody see that screen? Is it, see the presentation? Perfect. Okay, so you got to see all of the cool stuff that Zabby had to share. So I'm gonna talk about sort of the admission stuff, the like nitty gritty stuff, because even though you are an OEE student, you're also part of the general consecutive education program. Um, so you're gonna be with all of those students as well and you have to apply through that process um, as the same as everybody else. So your program track, the OEE, is just like an additional add-on. Um, so what's the advantage of, of Queen? So obviously the OEE program is a huge advantage and it's a big draw and that's why you're here tonight to learn about that. But there's also a lot of other things about Queen's and about our faculty of education that are really a benefit to you. And Queen's is, um, one of the highest ranked post-secondary institutions when it comes to student experience, and we take that really seriously, um, and we have a really inclusive approach to education. Um, the experiences that we offer in terms of learning and learning beyond the classroom. Um, so another great thing is that our graduates are getting out into the job market a year earlier than many other universities. So students who are a cohort, cohort that's starting the same time as you, are going to be there another year beyond when you're finishing. So that's a huge advantage. 
And, you know, teaching jobs right now, you couldn't be going out into a better market in terms of getting employed um, and finding a job. So really that's, that's a huge advantage to be done the program um, faster than some other schools. And another advantage of Queens is that you have a really dedicated staff. And so I'm um, a career and education advisor. And what that means for you is that not only are we here to help you work your way through the program, we're also here to help you with the career side of things. So we have web um, workshops about resumes, interview prep. Every year we have principals come from various boards and we do mock interviews. So you get to hear from people who are in the teaching world, principals who are doing the hiring. We're helping to prepare you for just like, not just getting that degree, but what does that mean after? And for two years after you've graduated, you're able to, to use our resources and come and see us and talk about interviews and resumes and all of that good stuff. So that's a really great Queen's advantage um, and something that we're really proud of. Um, so your program schedule. So this is what it sort of gives you a breakdown of what the program looks like if we're just gonna do a brief overview of what does your time here look like. Um, so you're going to be included in specific class blocks. So you're gonna be in Kingston for those class blocks here at Duncan MacArthur, but then you're gonna go out on your practicum placements. Um, and that's where you're gonna be in the classroom. And I'm not gonna like go through the entire schedule really in depth, but you can see on the slide how you're in class learning is interspersed with your practicum experience. And this allows students from our faculty um, to be here in Kingston and then apply the theory that you've been learning while you're here at Duncan MacArthur when you go out on practicum. And so as you move through the program and you gain more and more knowledge, you're able to use that in your practicum placements. And by the end in your last practicum, practicum placement, you'll be the classroom teacher. So you're responsible for the lesson planning, for teaching the lessons all the entire time you're there. So it's really just a, a process of building upon itself. So as you get more comfortable, you take on more and more responsibility. And that's sort of the idea of the program and the process. And then for your actual practicum experiences. So this is sort of an area where most people have a lot of questions and they're really interested in talking about. So um, you have 18 weeks of practicum in a publicly funded Ontario classroom. We work with 26 school boards. So we just have agreements with those school boards um, spanning from Burlington to Cornwall. Um, and the list of public boards is on the map on the side and there's a Catholic map on the next slide. Your first practicum in May will be in Kingston. It's sort of an observational brief practicum. Um, one thing we always just like to share is that a lot of people are hoping to do their, pl their placements in Kingston. Um, and the reality is there just isn't a population to support, you know, everybody in the program having their placement in Kingston. So just being aware that that's not necessarily going to be available to you to stay here in Kingston. Um, but I'll talk about that <coughs> also. So there's that. And then you have your alternative practicum, which Sabi mentioned. So for OEE, she talked about the examples of what people would do for those alternative practicums, and that takes uh, place in March and into April. Um, but otherwise, you're in Ontario schools for your placements. Um, so when you're admitted into the program, we ask all students to choose four school boards. So you're going to pick your first to your last choice. Um, your preference would be your first. And then um, the, within the designated, so if you pick, you know, Toronto and you're looking at the Dufferin Peel board, um, you can be placed anywhere within that board. So you're just able to pick the board, pick your choices, and then you'll be placed somewhere within that board in a school. Um, you're not able to go to a school that you have an affiliation with. So if it's your high school or your elementary school that you went to, or, you know, your mom or dad or uncle or aunt or somebody works at the school, you're not able to go to a school where you have that personal connection for good reason. I did that and it was good in the end, but I wish I'd gone somewhere that wasn't my, my high school. Um, <clears throat> so then when you're actually here, so when you're not out on your placement in the school boards, you're gonna be here at Duncan MacArthur um, and it's located in Kingston. And so we're halfway in between Toronto and Ottawa. So it's really a great place if you have to travel or to get home, a lot of people are able to take the train or drive and sort of not too far away from a lot of places where people will be coming. Um, we have a wide range of teaching facilities. We have an ITEP office. We have support and counseling services. Um, we just have a lot of, of things here at the faculty for you to take advantage of while you're here, while you're um, back from your practicum placements. Um, we have dedicated art spaces, a drama room, um, music rooms, 
an education library. So there's lots of like um, youth books. So if you want to take out books and bring them with you on practicum, you have the opportunity to do things like that. We also have a lot of educational resources. So for a number of years, um, the local school boards had an area here at the faculty where they would take out um, like there, there's a doll that has all the internal organs. So you can take out that and bring it to your classroom and use these educational resources while you're on practicum. So there's just a wealth of, of information, a wealth of resources for you to help you with your lesson planning and to make your lessons a little bit more exciting or just see what we have. So we always encourage um, you to, to go to the library and see what they have and they're very helpful. Um, and then, you know, Kingston has lots of restaurants. So I think they have like the most restaurants per capita um, maybe in Canada. So there's lots of neat stuff to do. Um, in terms of housing, we don't specifically house students um, in the consecutive program, but there's lots of opportunities and we'll sort of direct you towards resources. A lot of people sublet, a lot of people do Airbnbs for the time that they're here. Um, there's always a Facebook group every year. So often people will um, meet on the Facebook page. They'll say, hey, I, there's a house with four rooms. You know, is anybody interested in, in living in this house with me? And that's how a lot of people will also meet friends and, and find a place to live that way as well. Um, so in terms of applying, so this is sort of the stuff to just be aware of. So um, there are general requirements for applicants. So this is aside from your OEE supplemental documents, everybody who's applying to a consecutive education program. And just to note, if you're applying to OEE, we also recommend that you apply to the general consecutive program as well. If for some reason you weren't able to get into OEE, that doesn't mean that you wouldn't get into the general program. So we always recommend that you apply to both, make OEE your preference over the general program, just so that we know that that's your first choice, that you prefer to be in OAE, but you also would like to be in the general program. Um, and so we always recommend that applicants have a B minimum average and a four years honor degree or three year degree. The reason we recommend you having a four year degree is for a number of reasons. Uh, one of the biggest is once you're certified and you finish the program, you're actually placed higher on the pay scale. Um, because where you're placed on the pay scale for new teachers is based on your undergraduate information. So your degree and all of that. So having a four-year degree means that you're actually going to be making more money once you're a certified teacher. And you'd also receive um, like more application points if you have a four-year degree versus a three-year degree. Um, but that doesn't mean if you have a three-year degree that you wouldn't get in. It's just if you're trying to think about how is your application more competitive, having a four-year degree would be slightly more competitive. Um, so then we just encourage um, all applicants to have a half year course in developmental psych or a full year course in introductory um, psychology. And then if you're interested in intermediate senior, you would need to choose two teaching subjects when you apply. And this slide shows the teaching subjects that we have at Queen's. So this is what we offer. That does not mean that there are not other teaching subjects that exist, but at Queen's, this is the selection that we have. So you'd have to pick your first teaching subject and your second. Um, for your first teaching subject, you would need to have five full year courses or 10 half year. And for your second teaching subject, you need to have three full year or six half year courses. And within each teaching subject, there are specific requirements. So if English is one of your teaching subjects within the five full year or the three full year, um, you would have to have Canadian literature. And there, each teaching subject has some specific courses that within the overall amount of courses you need, you need to have specific subjects. And all of that is available on our website. And if you have any questions, we'll just reach out to student services in the Faculty of Education. Um, if you're interested in applying to primary junior, we um, recommend again to make your application more competitive. We recommend that you have one half year university course in one of these areas. So it literally is, you know, we're not looking for a specific English course. We're just looking for an English course that's offered by the English department. So when we look at your transcript, we can see there's an English course, there's a math course, there's a biology, chemistry, physics, environmental science any type of science, and then you would get that um, point for having that. So that's one way um, your application is potentially more competitive if you have one or all of these, these areas. And then for your personal statement of experience, so I think what we were talking about earlier, so everybody has to do a personal statement of experience. 
Um, so once you've submitted your application through TEAS, so you would go through TEAS, you pick the program that you'd want to apply to, within three to five business days, you'll receive an email from Student Services in the Faculty of Education, and it provides you with information on how to set up your Solus account, your next steps, um, submitting your PSC, and all of that information. And your um, the only document that is required for every application at Queen's is the PSC, so it's usually a document we get the most questions about. Um, and it's two questions. The first portion is a chart. So in that chart, you'll have an opportunity to list um, a number of experiences. So you would say, okay, I volunteered in the classroom one day a week from you know, 2017 until 2022 or whatever your experience is. It doesn't necessarily have to be classroom experience. Um, if you were a server during school, the experiences that you had as a server a lot of those skills are transferable to teaching. So if it's you know time management, people skills, communication skills, all of that stuff counts. So it's not just classroom experience that would fit into a chart. Um, if you taught sports, if you were a tutor, any of those things could count. And so that's just very matter of fact. So you just list it and just put that information in. And then the second portion of your PSC is like a short answer essay question. And so you're able to sort of expand on one of those experiences or all of those experiences. And the really what is um, kind of the thing that we want you to focus on is from those experiences and the experiences in your life, how have they prepared you to be an educator or how have they shaped the type of educator that you hope to be? So that's sort of, we really want to see what you're taking from, from those experiences. And that's what the PSC is sort of focusing on. It's not necessarily you just listing out everything you've done, but it's like, what did those experiences help you with or what experiences in your life have um, sort of propelled you towards this career and inspired you to be a certain type of educator. There's many ways to sort of go about it, but you always just want to come at it from the perspective of what you're hoping to accomplish and, and why you think that you're, you're a good fit. Um, <clears throat> one thing I will say is that um, Oftentimes people will have trouble if they copy and paste. So if you, you're tight, you type it up in Word. Um, sometimes it's just, it's better if you just look at what you typed and retype it in, in Solus versus copying and pasting. Sometimes you avoid some issues with word counts and things like that if you just retype it. Um, you get one opportunity. So you can't like type a bit, save it, come back, complete your PSE, have it all done. And then once you go to put it in, you have that one opportunity to fill it and save it. If for some reason something goes wrong, um, contact student services and we can always reset it, but we can reset it, you know, as long as you didn't fill it in at, you know, midnight the day before it's due, right? And it's on a Friday and it's the weekend. And so give yourself a buffer that, you know, there's a couple days before it's due. So that's due on December 10th. Give yourself that space so that if there is some sort of technical issue, you can contact us and you have time to fix it, okay? Um, let's see. And then again, everything is in your to-do list. So when you get into Solus, there's going to be a to-do list. It's going to list your transcripts. If For the OEE program, it's going to list everything that we talked about um, right here. So all of these supplemental documents, all of this information is going to be in your to-do list in Solus. As we receive those items, we're going to take them out of your to-do list. So eventually when you log into Solus, your to-do to list should be empty. So by December 10th, we should have everything. And then you know that you've submitted everything you need to and there's nothing for you to worry about. Um, these OEE supplemental documents that Zab Zabby went through and talked about what they would look like, um, all of this is submitted from our website. So if you go to the OEE page and you go to how to apply, there'll be a link where you upload each of these documents. They all have to be uploaded at the same time. So again, work on them, get them all ready. When everything is complete, you go to that link and you upload each one into the spot that's provided, and then you submit everything at once. Um, and that would be the process for that. So OEE supplemental documents are all from our website. Your PSE is done through your Solus account. And again, there'll be information and steps of how to do that when you get that email from Queens after you've applied through TEAS. Um, and just a reminder that your application through TEAS has to be done by December 1st. And then all of this supplemental documentation, transcripts, OEE documents, PSE, has to be in by December 10th. Oops. Um, 
So just to show you again, this is what like the T's, those are the codes for the program. So you go to the um, UAC T's website and it's the same website that you used if you um, would have applied to universities from high school. You click on the blue square. And again, there's all the key dates and deadlines. So we will send out our first round of offers by mid-February. So that's why everything is really tight because our program starts in um, May. We send everything out early, but we give you the opportunity that um, if you've applied to other programs, their offers should be sent out by March 1st. So you'll have the opportunity to receive any offers and then make your choice um, right after the deadline for other schools, which is March 1st. Um, so if it sounds good, um, again, here's all the dates, um, and you do not apply, um, sorry, yeah, so sorry, so that you do not apply for the program track, again, that's just sort of the supplemental where you apply um, through the website. Um, and your reference letters, you would have them direct them to our um, EDUC student services office. So those won't be a part of your application process where you can upload everything, but they will be um, able to, to email them to you, to the student services email. Oops. Um, and then again, there's just all of our links for our website, all of our information. So if you have any questions, if you're unclear on anything, always just reach out. There's always someone here, it, you'll, if you're not sure who to send it to, if you just go to the main EDUC student services account, it will get to where it needs to go. Um, and that's basically it. So I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen. And then if anybody has any questions, just feel free to ask them. If you don't feel comfortable asking them here, just feel free to email. Um, I can put my email um, as well into the chat. So if you wanna contact me directly, you can do that as well. There we go. So does anybody have any questions? Oh, Jackson? Yeah, I realize this is more to do with um, the OE supplemental stuff and I should have asked it earlier, but I sure. just thought of it now. Um, the, uh, the letters of reference, it says they're supposed to be submitted by the referees directly to the student services office. Yeah. Um, obviously, if that's happening, we don't have control over when they're submitted, really. Right. right. So is that that's all right? That's something. There's some leeway, but it, because because our offers go out by early, like mid February, there's only so long we can wait. Um, we have to send out those offers. So, you know, if it's a, a couple days past December 10th, like there's always some leeway, but like realistically, they have to be in by the 10th. Um, and I know that's hard when it, you're you know putting that in somebody else's hand. So. I will say there's always personal circumstances and, you know, if it's within reason that it's coming in past the December 10th dead deadline, like there's, there's always room for the potential that like, that's okay, but I can't guarantee that. So you just have to operate under the understanding that December 10th is the day <coughs> pardon me, that everything has to be in. So that's the deadline. So if you you need to really stress that to your the people you choose to be your reference, that it has to be in by that date. Maybe tell them an earlier date. <laughs> tell them it has to be in by December 1st so that if they're late, then it comes by December 10th, whatever, whatever works. If you feel um, you know, you're looking at your to-do list and it's still there, reach out to student services. It's better if you reach out to us, you know, a few days before and say, you know, I've contacted my reference, like I haven't heard anything versus 10 days after it was due, suddenly we're hearing from you. And it's sort of like, well, you know, if you were worried, maybe you should have reached out a little bit sooner and then we could have accommodated it, it differently. So if you're ever worried, just reach out to student services, okay? Perfect. Any other questions? Yeah, um, I just yeah. wanted to add on to that. So the, um, our referees or people who are writing our references, they just send it directly to that email address yes. and just kind of note that this is for so-and-so applicant. Yeah, include your name and that it's for the OEE program. Okay, okay. okay.
Um, and sorry, I had a part two question. Sure. Yeah, of um, course. Also on uh, some of the OEE um, application requirements. So I don't know mm -hmm. how much you can answer this one, but I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so the chart kind of describing what the requirements are um, that is online. Mm -hmm. It doesn't um, say which or like a, in terms of the requirements for the resume and the alternative resume, how many pages yeah. and everything else. And so I wasn't sure if you could go back to that slide I that did think... have that there. I don't have Zabby's, uh, I don't know if I have it on my, I don't think I have the pages on my slide. It, all that is on the website too though. Okay. So everything that's in the slide is on the website. So if you go to the OE program page on our website, all of that, how to apply will be there. So I would say go and check. I think Zabby said that she prefers if it's like two pages, like really one page, but two sided technically. Okay. Um, so not beyond that. Certainly you would want to err on the side of things like as Abby was saying, things being less wordy. Um, right. You know, so go look at the website, double check. If anything isn't clear from the website, email student services and okay. we'll clarify it. So it's always better if you're not sure to reach out and ask versus trying to interpret something. And then, you know, accidentally you do something incorrectly and then that's on you. Sure. But if you ask, it's, an, it's a simple fix. And then we clarify. And then you have that email that says, hey, I reached out and you said that this was what I needed to do. And then you have that, that paper trails showing that you asked the question and you got the answer. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Perfect. You're welcome. Hi, sir. I can't Hi. see your email in the, in the chat. I wasn't uh, sure. So it's just, it's Holly, H-O-L-L-Y dot Robinson. R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N at Queens U, just Queens with the letter U dot com or dot CA. Sorry. Thank you. I don't have a question right now. I just uh I, I know I'm gonna have one later. So perfect. Thanks. And again, if you forget, if you don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be me, it would come to me at some point, but just the EDUC student services, it's on our website. Right. If that's always a safe bet. If you're not sure, just email that student services account and it will get. We don't have a huge faculty. Our office is not huge. It'll get to the person it needs to get to. Okay. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. I was wondering uh, about this video being recorded. Is yep, it's being recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, can we view it later? Is there a. Yeah, it will be posted on our website. So when you go to the OEE page, it'll be posted there. Um, I don't know. It probably will be next week. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. I had a question. Sorry, I came a few minutes late, so no it might have been addressed already. But okay. um, for concurrent education students, is there a fee to apply to the? OER? No. So if you're a Con Ed student, you're already technically in the program. The only thing a Con Ed student is going to do is the supplemental documents. So the alternative resume, the artifact. So go to our website. Um, also, if you come to the final year meeting that is happening on Monday, we're going to talk about that as well. Okay. But yeah, Con Ed students aren't paying for anything. You've already been accepted into the program. Just not into the, the program track. Any other questions? So then I guess uh, we'll say good night then. If something comes to mind, again, reach out anytime. That's why we're here. We're here to help you through the admissions process, the process through the program, and then when you're out there in the job market. So we're really, that's our job and that's what we're here to do. So never be afraid to reach out and ask any questions and, and we're, we'll help you with anything that's going on, okay? So thank you so much for coming tonight. And we're really happy that you came to hear about the program and. We look forward to receiving all of your supplemental documents and learning more about you and then hopefully seeing you next year um, in May. So thanks everybody. Have a good night. Bye.